Hi, everyone. I'm here with Faye Flam. She's a science columnist with Bloomberg View. Thank you so much for coming, Faye. Thank you for having me, Jade. Now, you write a lot about science and particularly in the context of the election. So what has been your take on the debates and the, the election so far? Well, I've been very curious about the language that the candidates used. And I've interviewed experts in communication and linguists about the way that they don't always tell us the truth, even if they don't literally lie. They're very tricky things that that politicians and other people, salespeople, can do to make us believe the wrong thing. Now, we're here to talk about that this whole event tonight is about science in the election and how the candidates haven't been mentioning science of the 69 questions that have been asked of the political candidates so far. Only one even referenced a science topic, that was energy. Um, so if you could ask a question to the candidates, what question would you ask? Well, I would ask a how question because I think often there's a sort of a magical thinking that goes on where politicians will promise a lot of things, but not how. And I do believe that global warming, climate change is one of the most critical things that we could do something about now. So I would ask them, how can you help us develop an energy policy that will allow us to avert the worst possible consequences of global warming? I really like that because a lot of people say we need to tackle climate change or we need to do something, but they never say exactly what that's going to yeah, be. Yeah, and there are lots of ways that they, that you know there are incentives. There are ways that we can nudge the the uh, country and the world toward more sustainable energy. Now. Recently, the free press has been an issue in this debate, particularly recently with Donald Trump uh, threatening to sue the New York Times. So why do you think that a free press is important in this election? And what do you see your role as a science columnist in the election as being? Oh, that's a great question. I, obviously, the free press is critical because people can't make good choices if they don't have good information. And we're facing issues that are so complicated right now. The health care debate is incredibly difficult and complex, environmental problems. And we really need to have an in independent journalist to be able to, in uh, to go into depth and investigate things. Uh, there was a case, if you wanted to look, a very interesting case. There was one that involves a British science writer named Simon Singh, who wrote a lot of really good investigative reporting on uh, alternative medicine and found a lot of things that didn't work. And he got sued, and it ended up an absolute mess. I think he finally won, but there was a, he had to spend a lot of money. It was time consuming. It was terrible. And that doesn't happen in the U.S. I think our, our laws allow us to debunk pseudoscience without getting in that kind of trouble. So that case, I think, made us appreciate what we have here. And Trump can, he's allowed to sue the New York Times, but he may, he may not have a case against them. People sue all the time, but they don't win. Does, do you think the threat of legal action ever impacts the free press from providing information that voters need to make good choices? I thought that the answer was in the letter that the New York Times, the response the New York Times had really summed it up pretty well, which is this is important information. We need to get it out. And uh, suit or no suit, we're not going to be intimidated. Now, back to science. So this whole event tonight is to talk about science in the context of the election. Why does science matter in the election? Why should candidates talk about it more? And why does science matter to you? Should I start with me or should I start with them? <laughs> Let's start with you. Okay. Well, you know, when I when I interview scientists, I often ask them what they think science is because it has a different definition to many people. And the, my favorite one was uh, a biologist who said science is a way of uh, seeing the world as it really is rather than the way we wish it was. And I thought, you know, that's very useful. It's not perfect, but over time it has helped people see the world in a way that is uh, repeatable, <laughs> observable, mm -hmm. uh, predictable in some cases. So it's incredibly useful. I mean for, as a journalist I cover science in a critical way, the way business reporters or political reporters cover uh, businesses and politicians. But uh, for me, that that uh, you know, that's a good challenge because scientists are fallible and they do sometimes try to fool people. And they do sometimes make mistakes and they get things wrong. And so it's also important for journalists to cover science in a critical way. 
Good point. Now, you've been critiquing science and covering science, talking about science issues and what we can do to solve them. Of all the articles that you've written about science, can you name one that was your favorite piece to write? Oh, that's a tough one. I think one of my favorites was a story I wrote for the Philadelphia Inquirer about forensic evidence. And in this case, there was a there was somebody who had been in prison for, I forgot how many years, 30, 40 years. He had been in prison a long time. And the, science, the case against him was all based on uh, allegedly on science, but it was very poor science. It was, uh, it claim is that fibers that were found on a body matched fibers in his house, but nobody looked at a control, how likely it would be that you'd find a, a fiber of the same color on him. And after the story ran, he ended up uh, getting out of prison. So I guess, I don't know how much impact my story had, but it, it couldn't have hurt. Now, if the people who are watching this at home want to read more of your wonderful science columns, where can they read your work? Well, I write for Bloomberg View, which is Bloomberg's editorial page. So if you go to BloombergView.com and you look up my name, all of the columns are uh, on a list. And I write about pretty much every area of science. Uh, and I try to look at current events from a science perspective and explaining how current events, like de delving deep into current events. I have to say, for anyone who's watching this, please do check out Faye's column on the innuendo that's being used in the election. That was a really wonderful one. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Faye. It's been a pleasure. And vote for science.